Thank you very much. President Cyril Ramaphosa's win was no surprise. His re-election came after his party, the African National Congress, struck a late deal with the main opposition party, the Democratic Alliance, allowing him to clinch a second term in office. In his victory speech, Ramaphosa thanked the lawmakers who voted for him and promised to work with all politicians. It is with pleasure that I accept. It will once again be a privilege and a pleasure to serve this great nation in the position of president. I accept this as a big responsibility and I wish to thank all leaders for your congratulatory messages delivered here at this podium. Your messages are a clear clarion call for working together. The South African election was historic in many ways. With no party having a majority in parliament, a government of national unity is now in place. The ANC, the DA and two other smaller parties will now co-govern South Africa. Many are waiting to see how this power-sharing arrangement will work. Expectations are we can get to work on rescuing South Africa, get to work on serving the people of the country and building a better future. I think we get an opportunity today to write a new chapter for South Africa and that chapter I think we can make the best chapter ever. No party's got a majority. We're required to work together and we're going to do it. Julius Malema of the Economic Freedom Fighters, who faced off with Ramaphosa in the presidential ballot, considered defeat and promised to be a formidable opposition force. Well, we're going to hold the executive accountable. There's no government of national unity which is going to do as they wish. There is an effective opposition that is going to hold them accountable. And that's what we're going to do. When South Africa went to the polls last month, key issues among voters were unemployment, crime, corruption, power cuts and inequality. And when Cyril Ramaphosa gets sworn in on Wednesday, his work is already cut out. Caroline B, CGTN. Renee Dalcarm is in Cape Town and joins us live now for more. Hi there, Renee. Renee, the ANC leader, Sir Rampos, has been re-elected as president. How has the country reacted to all this? Well, so far, there seems to be quite a celebratory mood um, with the election of President Ram Ramaphosa to his second term. He was elected last night through a voting block by his party, the African National Congress, as well as the Democratic Alliance, former but as sworn rivals of the, the ANC, as well as other smaller parties. Of course, the DA, um, when, when they announced um, the president's re-election last night, standing right next to him side by side. The EFF, however, came out guns blazing. They want to reignite the flames of a, a financial scandal involving the president. This relates to an undisclosed amount of cash which was found at the president's uh, game farm. Allegedly, it was uh, stolen um, and the president failed to report it to the relevant authorities according to a report which was handed into parliament. Parliament um, asked the report to make a ruling. They found that the president did seem to have a case to answer, but a vote to impeach the parliament at that time was defeated by the African National Congress, which then enjoyed the majority in parliament. Well, we are not going to work with this government of national unity. We are going to play our oversight role. We are going to play our opposition role. And we have done it from today. Immediately once we are sworn in, we put a motion on Palapala, which people thought is dead. Palapala is not dead. It is back in parliament. It is alive. And anyone who takes decision on that Palapala will have to comply with the constitution. Remember the president said that he is going to review the panel report at the constitutional court. The constitutional court refused to hear him. Therefore, that report stands because there is no court that set it aside. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Renee, now that the election is over and done with, we now have this national unity government that is in formation. What is next for the government of national unity? 
Well, next steps will include the inauguration of the president, which is set to take place on Wednesday, the 19th of June. Focus will then turn uh, to the setting up of the new cabinet for the seventh administration in South Africa. That will, of course, be the prerogative of President Cyril Ramaphosa. It will be interesting to see which top ministerial positions will go to other parties such as the Democratic Alliance and smaller political parties which will form the Government of National Unity. Of course, the Government of National Unity Agreement is still a work in progress. It hasn't been finalized, but there's plenty of optimism in the country right now uh, about the will of, of many political parties, including the biggest and the smallest parties, to work together for the sake of the country and its people. So, Renee, when we just look at South African history, a government of national unity has governed in South Africa before. Will this be different? And if it will be different, how? Well, the government of national unity in 1994 uh, was done under an interim constitution which allowed for a president and two deputy presidents. Uh, at the time, former President Nelson Mandela, uh, we saw the ANC's Thabo Mbeki become the first democratic deputy president, as well as F.W. de Klerk, who had the second deputy president's position. Of course, he came from the old apartheid government. That saw the first historic government of national unity in South Africa. This time round, the constitution allows for just one deputy president. And one of the biggest conditions of this government of national unity is that South Africa's constitution will not be touched or changed.